Hello and welcome to this video on the Guarani language. Guarani is also known as Ava Nye'e, which means language of men, with Ava meaning man and Nye'e meaning language. It is a Tupi language, more specifically belonging to the Tupi Guarani language family, that is an official language in Paraguay, but it is also spoken in areas of Argentina and Brazil, and in total is spoken by approximately 6 million people. It is also one of the official languages of Mercosur, which is the political and economic agreement between Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay and Venezuela. You can see the regions in which the language is spoken in the blue areas on the map of South America in the top right corner. Roughly 90% of the Paraguayan population is able to speak Guarani, with most Paraguayans being bilingual in both Spanish and Guarani. Interestingly, there appears to be a divide in the usage of Guarani depending on where you live. For example, in rural areas, Guarani is typically the language that will be used, to the point that some rural communities are actually monolingual in the language, with rates of Guarani monolingualism being over 60% in some of these more rural areas. In more urban areas, Guarani is still used but seems to be somewhat context dependent. Essentially, in more formal settings, Spanish will be the language of choice, and even in non-formal settings, Spanish will still be spoken if the people communicating are not close with one another. Then, even if two speakers are close and are in a casual setting, they may still use Spanish if they are discussing a serious topic and they think that the person they are talking to is more proficient in Spanish. However, Guarani is still a very stable language in Paraguay, and in fact, surveys suggest that it is preferred by 59.2% of households compared to only 35.7% of households preferring Spanish in Paraguay. Paraguay is in fact the only Latin American country where an originally indigenous language, in this case Guarani, has both official status and is spoken by a large majority of the population, and it is the only American indigenous language that has been adopted by people who are not indigenous, such as those of European ancestry. Regarding its morphosyntactic typology, Guarani is an agglutinative language and exclusively concatenative in that it forms words by taking one or two roots and adding morphemes to create new meanings. It is a tensus language and does not have case in the typical sense, however it has a large number of postpositions with Cuvershain, De Canese and Acosta Alcaraz identifying 52 total postpositions in the language. In terms of its morphological alignment, Guarani is a split intransitive language and it has both active and inactive predicate prefixes. There is a person hierarchy marked in the verb for a transitive predicate where the singular is the highest on the hierarchy and the third person is the lowest on the hierarchy. An active prefix is used if the argument is for the actor of the transitive verb, and an inactive prefix is used if it is the patient of the transitive verb. Only the actor is marked with an active prefix if the actor and patient are different but both in the third person. To summarise, transitive verbs have two sets of prefixes, with one cross-referencing the actor and the other cross-referencing the patient of an argument. This is illustrated in these examples. For example, in A, the active first person singular prefix A is being used whereas in C it is the inactive first person singular prefix of CHE, then in B you can see the active second person singular prefix RE contrasted with the inactive prefix NINDE in example D. In the case of intransitive verbs, a marker is chosen from the actor or patient set depending on whether the participant is agentive or not. Uh, word order in Guarani could be described as subject, verb, object, however it is more common to simply just be verb, object. Um, intransitive subjects seem to be slightly more common in a pre-verbal position with transitive subjects being post-verbal, in addition to this, indirect objects can be placed before or after uh, direct objects. Um, Guarani shows head marking, dependent marking, as well as no marking, but as the predicate always co-references co an argument, it can be considered to be predominantly head marking. Uh, subjects of marked will be head marked with active or inactive prefixes, but again this is dependent on whether they are higher than or equal to the object, depending on the person hierarchy mentioned before. Indirect objects are dependent marked with the postposition pe or its nasal variant me. Direct objects have differential ob object marking and it appears to be the case that they are dependent marked in the same way as indirect objects when they are animate and unmarked when they are inanimate. But direct objects can also be head marked when they appear as an inactive prefix on the predicate. Possessive phrases with noun possessors are unmarked except when the noun in question is relational. Guarani has many Hispanicisms due to its interaction with Spanish. Usually borrowed verbs are integrated with oxytone stress and coda reduction while borrowed nouns differ in terms of their levels of integrations, with some Spanish loans not having been adapted at all. This is a diagram of the proposed stratal hierarchy of Spanish loans in Guarani, with the higher strata being less adapted than the lower strata. In this bottom stratum, uh, words repair complex onsets, codas, as well as lexical stress that is non-final. For example, the word for Australia, which is Australia in Spanish, is referred to Otaralia in Guarani. 
In the next stratum, complex onsets are not repaired, however, codas and non-final stress are. For example, the word for to write is escribir in Spanish and becomes escribir, fixing the coda. Um, and the word for grace changes the stress from gracia to gracia in Guarani. In the partially nativized stratum, um, they still repair codas, but they allow for non-final stress. For example, the word for Monday changes from lunes to lunes. Um, the barely nativized stratum only repairs nasal codas, with non-nasal codas, complex onsets, and non-final stress being retained from the original Spanish. For example, the word for Islam changes slightly from Islam to Islam. Um, the final stratum does not repair any of these. For example, the word for confirma confirmation is the same in both Spanish and Guarani as just confirmación. Um, there is a suggestion that the level of nativization depends on how late words are added to Guarani, with later words experiencing less nativization. On the right, you can see a summary table of the adaptations made to Spanish words, with the first line correlating to the nativized words and the bottom line correlating to the unadapted words, with a range of different strata in between. Guarani's syllable structure is optional consonant, optional vowel, vowel and optional vowel. As you can see, all syllables are open and end in a vowel. Stress tends to be oxytone in monomorphemic words. And the language has 15 consonant phonemes and 12 vowel phonemes, and it also has nasal harmony. If you look at this table, you can see that b, d, and g are voiced and have nasal allophones of m, n, and ny, respectively. Uh, the fricatives, on the other hand, are voiceless. It should be noted also that the lateral l at the bottom is actually a result of contact with the Spanish language. In terms of vowels, Quarani has six oral vowels as well as six corresponding nasal vowels, which you can see here. Um, leading to a total of 12 vowel phonemes. Also, as pictured, you can see that the vowels can be closed, mid, or open, and they can also be central or otherwise front or back. Returning back to the phonology, Guarani syllable structure can be as little as a single vowel with single consonant onsets being optional and, an, and on either side of a nuclear vowel, a high vowel glide can appear. Stress in Guarani is word final in words that are monomorphemic. However, there are some exceptions, such as ajura, meaning neck, or kava, meaning wasp. Also, nasal vowels are always stressed. Due to the fact that morphemes in Guarani can be both functionally stress-bearing and non-stress-bearing, stress in poly polymorphemic words will fall on the last stress-bearing morpheme. Uh, nasal harmony is another feature of Guarani, which Rose and Walker have described as a sort of vowel consonant harmony. Both consonants and vowels are affected, and either of these can trigger nasal harmony. The picture on the left shows the relative timing of velum lowering, which is also referred to as nasality, as well as relative timing of closure, which is also known as orality, for contour consonants in Guarani. There is some suggestion that nasal harmony is, nasal harmony is being lost, which some theorists could be due to Spanish contact. I've put this example of a sentence in Guarani here, um, Avakamita kopiharove, meaning I'll do some milking this morning, just to illustrate the morphology of the language. As I alluded to earlier in the typology section, Guarani is somewhat polysynthetic regarding its morphology, which is which you can see here. Although this sentence only consists of two words, you can see that all of these additions of different morphemes manage to convey a decent amount of meaning. For example, a makes it to be in the first person singular, or ta has the implication that it is a future activity. As I mentioned earlier, Guarani is part of the Tipi family. Within this family, it belongs to the Tipi Guarani branch. As you can see in this tree diagram, other languages within this family include the Maui language and Aweti, with Aweti often being cited as the closest related language to Guarani. From these languages, Guarani is by far the most widely spoken, with its over 6 million speakers. Linguists suggest that the Tipi and Guarani branches of the Tipi Guarani family probably had a common ancestor around 2000 years ago. And there's also speculation that there was a proto tipi language even further back around 5,000 years ago, around 3000 BC. According to Urban, proto tipi guarani probably branched off around 500 BC, as indicated on this timeline, a language called tipi namba, which is also known as classical tipi, is theorized to perhaps be a direct ancestor of one or more modern tipi Guaranian languages. It is said to have originated around the mid-1550s and lasted until around the 1750s. According to Schleicher, Old Guarani originated around 1600 and lasted until around the 1750s. Modern Guarani is genealogically linked to this language that was spoken by Jesuit missionaries from 1610 to 1767. Unlike other missionary communities, the Jesuits in Paraguay aimed to speak the native language and also attempted to standardize it, which included introducing a writing system based on the Latin script, as Guarani had lacked a writing system up until this point. Because of this, it is sometimes referred to as Jesuitic Guarani in the literature. The Jesuits wrote the first dictionaries and grammars for the language, 
For example, Montoya pu published the first written grammar of Guarani in 1639, titled Tesoro de la Lengua Guarani. I've included it on the right side here. The Jesuits also modified the language to be more compatible with Christianity. They attempted to make a purer form of the language and thus would avoid Hispanicisms as well. When the Jesuits left in the mid 18th century, the indigenous population integrated into mestizo society. However, it is not fully clear how much influence Old Guarani has had on the modern language. Here I've included an example of Old Guarani taken from a folio that also contains Spanish and Latin. Um, it's unclear what year exactly it's from, but it would have been during the Jesuit missionaries, so between the years of 1610 and 1767. It is of a religious nature as well, and there are mentions of God, for example. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a direct translation into modern Guarani, so I can't compare it to this older form. I will point out, however, the Christianization of the language. For example, Tupa here is used to refer to God, when originally it would have meant something like Great Spirit in its original Guarani meaning. Since the end of the Reducciones, which were the Jesuit missionaries, Guarani has become increasingly influenced by Spanish contact. For example, the word order has changed from subject object verb to uh, subject verb object, and the definite article la and lo have also been acquired. La is used with singular noun phrases and lo is used with plural noun phrases, although they're used slightly differently from their Spanish origins as they're used more like di diactic markers rather than a definite article. Um, Old Guarani also lacked conjunctions and preferred juxtaposition subordination. However, modern Guarani utilizes Spanish coordinators and subordinators. A final change I'll discuss is the number system. Old Guarani utilized a five value number system. One was Pete, two was Mokoi, three was Mombahabi, and four was Irundi. Um, and then Hesa meant many, but also often meant the number 10. Although this number system is still in use, the modern language is borrowed from Spanish for higher numbers, and data from Cerno indicates that values between 2 and 10 are all from Spanish, as well as 65 other higher values. It seems that the modern language is borrowed from Spanish in this regard for practicality, and another um, noted change is that polysynthesis, polysynthesis has also been reduced. Um, this influence from Spanish might be because it is viewed to be more prestigious than Guarani is uh, viewed to be. After the Jesuits left Paraguay, not much was recorded about Guarani after the mid-18th century until around the mid-19th century, roughly 100 years later, and this marks the starting point for the modern Guarani language. It has experienced very little change since then. As I mentioned before, in the modern day, Guarani is widely utilised in Paraguay. As well as being spoken by most of the population, there have been several novels written in Guarani. For example, the first recognised novel to be written in the Guarani language is Mita Reba Haha, written by Juan Maidana in 1980, closely followed by Calaito Pombero, written by Tadeo Zaratea in 1981. More recently, two other novels have also been published, with Pori Rape by Hugo Centurion being published in 2016, and Tati by Arnaldo Casco Villalba, published in 2017, as part of, of a revitalisation in the Guarani language. In 2013, the indigenous Guarani community also acquired an indigenous radio licence, and in rural areas, Guarani is now the most broadcast language on the radio airwaves. And major radio stations in Paraguay also feature Guarani prog programs regularly. It is thought that local community radio stations have greatly helped the Guarani language to thrive. Guarani has also seen a revival in print media, with the Diario Popular launching in 1995. This is a daily tabloid that is written fully in Hopara, which is a mix between Guarani and colloquial Spanish. In addition to this, the most circulated newspaper in Paraguay, known as ABC Colour, introduced a daily news summary called Marandu in 2001, and this is fully written in Guarani. Finally, hosts of television programmes now also regularly use Guarani to communicate with their audience. Clearly, Guarani is thriving in the modern day. Regarding internal classifications for the Tubian language family, Carvalho 2022 states that there are two main classifications. Firstly, Rodriguez and Cabral 2012 research led to this representation where proto tbians split into western and eastern branch and it is along this eastern branch that the TB Guarani family of languages can be found. Just to quickly explain proto tbian um, it had 12 vowels, 6 oral vowels and 6 nasal vowels. Oral vowels are preserved in TB Guarani languages as well as in Oweti and Maui. There is a partial split where E becomes rounded in these three languages and merges with O before the labialized co consonants Pua and Kwa. For example, proto tbian Epua becomes Os in proto tbian Guarani, but remains Ep in Tibari. And similarly, proto tbian Equa becomes Ok in Oweti and Maui, but remains Ek in Tibari. The Western families in Rodriguez and Cabral's classification had their back vowels lowered, so U changed to O and O changed to A, leading to these languages only having five vowel venues. I've included some examples here illustrating that change. Nasal vowels are mostly preserved in the daughter languages, however, Tupari has no nasalized high vowels. 
Regarding the consonants, Proto-Tupian had 27 consonants. Uh, the labialized velar subqua was preserved in some families, but in others it was unrounded and merged with reflexes of ka. In Tupigrani, Oweti, Maori, Jiruna, and Munduruku, this unrounding occurred after it was rounded to o. Uh, these languages are all grouped under the eastern branch in Rodriguez and Cabral's classification, so maybe it's because of commonalities such as this. In addition to this, most Tupian languages retained wa and ja as distinct phonemes. However, in Tupigrani, ja is a reflex of wa. Oweti also experienced a fronting of wa, but with t with the V velar of certain output of ka. So, for example, wak changes to ja, tse, o in proto tibian grani and tak in oweti, but remain, retains its w w phoneme in languages such as maui and tupirari. The fact that oweti was the only other language to undergo a change may reflect that it is the closest related to the tupi grani languages. An alternate internal classification comes from Meira and Drude, 2015, who abandoned the Eastern and Western divide and had a classification that indicates that Tupi Guarani actually spits off from a Moeti Guarani family branch and that this then leads to languages such as Guarani. Although this differs from Rodriguez and Cabral's 2012 classification, um, it does also agree that Aweti and Maui are the closest related languages to the Tupi Guarani family and they also both lead to the implication that these languages shared a common ancestor. Um, many have come to refer to this as proto moeti Guarani. Aweti is theorized to be closer related to Guarani than Maui is because it seems to have undergone some of the same changes as proto tupian Guarani before it split off. An example is the development of proto maui aweti Guarani Tia in person marked paradigms. Aweti and proto tupian Guarani are both theorized to have undergone the same changes before splitting off, leading to a theorized proto aweti Guarani, which you can see in the diagram below. I will now discuss the literature regarding this section of the family tree, which denotes the Tupi Guarani language family. To begin this discussion, I will begin with Lemley, 1971, who developed this internal classification that you can see on the right hand side. On the left, I've just included a list of acronyms that you can see in this diagram. For example, GN denotes Guarani, which is the language that's found in Paraguay. I am also going to discuss this in relation to the table showing examples of sound changes across each language that led to their grouping. So firstly, Lemley proposed that P changed to Tsa in the languages on the left, which you can see in the way that Epiak changed to Echan and Echak in the first row of the table. Usak and Nirubu also probably underwent this change before later changing its Tsa to an S sound. Um, another change in this left-hand side is the deletion of the t sound in some words, which you can see in the second row in words such as iha and e. On the far left, Lemley proposed a sound change where vowels lost their nasalization, and the a vowel phoneme was also changed, which you can see in the words kari in asurini and koroi in guajaraja. Then over on the other side, Lemley proposed that word final consonants disappeared, which you can see in Guarani, Guario, and Siriano, with the deletion of the K consonant. Um, finally, Lemley proposed that T changed to C and C, which you can also see here. Um, Jensen, 1984, points out some issues with this classification. For example, regarding the change from P to T, as Guarani changes to S, it suggests a change from P to T to S, which is similar to Uber Usak which suggests that Guarani is misplaced in its current position. Additionally, Jensen highlights that Parentintin has a form epieg, which means its classification is also problematic, as it didn't undergo the p titsa change. Jensen further theorized several isoglosses for TP Guarani languages. For example, the conservation of t in front of e in Parentintin, Shiriguano, and Tupinamba, the conservation of p in Parentintin, Guario, and Tupinamba, the conservation of the opposition between Pua and Kwa in Kayabi, Kamayura, and Tupinamba. The conservation of Su and Wa in Emma Parine, Wayampi, Parintintin, Guarayo, Chiagrano, Kaiba, Mumbaya, and Tupinamba. The final consonant drop in Wayampi from Upper Jari, Chiagrano, Kaiba, Mbia, and sometimes in Emma Parine, Wayampi, and Guarayo. The merge of Ye and Yo in Emma Parine, Wayampi, Urubu, and Gojaraja. The occurrence of Oppo in Parentintin, Guerrero, Chiguano, Camayura, and Tipinamba. And the conservation of T and Ya in Amafara and Wayampi, Parentintin, Guajaraja, Kayabi, and Tapirape. And finally, the nasalization of Sa -e in Amafara and Wayampi, Kayabi, Guajaraja, Tapirape, and Camayura. 
Dietrich is often cited as one of the best attempts of developing a subgrouping hypothesis as he used a data-driven approach compared to Lemley's more intuition-based approach. In 1990, Dietrich looked at a range of phonological and morphological linguistic evidence to attempt to classify the tb Guarani family. He established both phonological and morphological criteria to analyse each language. As you can see in the first example here, he considered a range of possibilities for the treatment of the reconstructed phoneme with the dropped option as well as an option where p became h, along with multiple other considerations that I won't list for sake of brevity, but he did consider a lot of different options. He used these criteria to construct different matrices that would show the languages that fulfilled or did not fulfill each criteria, and then used these to calculate rates of phonetic coherence between languages, rates of corresponding coherence based off of morphological criteria, and finally rates of similarity by considering both phonetic and morphological criteria. Here I've also included the results for Paraguayan Guarani, which is also called Avenue E, as you may remember, regarding its rates of phonetic and corresponding coherence and its rates of similarity across different TB Guarani and languages. As you can see, it is most similar to Kaiwa according to these figures in the top um, left section of the slide. I've also included Dietrich's final grouping of the different TB Guarani languages. It is interesting that he indicates which languages are more conservative versus more innovative in terms of how they have changed since the proto language, with the more conservative options being towards the top of the diagram and the more innovative languages towards the bottom. However, despite identifying similarities between languages and small subgroupings, he admits that the subgrouping to be granny is far from clear from his analysis. This brings us to Michael et al. 2015, who conducted a Bayesian phylogenetic analysis to further refine the internal classification of the tb Guaranian branch. According to this classification, the Guarani spoken in Paraguay is found in the Guaranian subgroup, which is within the southern subgroup of the diasporic subgroup of the peripheral subgroup of the nuclear tb Guarani subgroup in the tb Guarani language family. The data set used to construct this internal classification was not published, so I unfortunately can't show specific examples here that Michael and colleagues based their analysis on. Carvalho 2022 suggests that Guaranian glottal prothesis is a phonological isogloss that distinguishes the Guaranian languages from other TB Guaranian languages, as it is only found to be applicable at the proto Guarani level. Guaranian glottal prothesis is when a glottal fricative is inserted in the word initial position when the second syllable of a word's onset is a glottal stop. For example, proto TB Guarani ui has become ui in Old Tupi, oi in Tocantins Asarini, ui in Kayabi, and uia in Kamaira. But in Guaranian languages, it has gained a prothetic H and is hui in per Paraguayan Guarani, hui in Mabaya Guarani, and hui in Old Guarani, suggesting that a proto Guarani hui can be reconstructed. The same pattern can also be seen for the word a, -a when, where the word has gained a H in Paraguayan Guarani, Mabaya Guarani, Old Guarani, Kaioa Guarani, and Chiriguano Guarani, but not in the non Guaranian languages. Guaranian glottal prothesis is found in all Guaranian varieties that were included in Michael et al.'s um, classification, thus providing support for this classification. So far in this video, I've mentioned different reconstructions of the proto-language of Guarani, for example, proto tupian Proto-Guarani, and proto moeti Guarani. However, most of the literature focuses on proto tupian Guarani as the proto-language of Guarani, so I will focus my discussion on this for the remainder of the video. In 1971, Lemley was the first linguist to publish a reconstruction of proto tupian Guarani, and she was able to reconstruct more than 220 proto-forms of the proto tupian Guarani language. Later, in 1984, Jensen conducted a comparative analysis of the tb Guaranian family and revised Lemley's reconstruction as well as reconstructing proto-forms for proto tupian Guarani's morphology. Schleicher then further revised this reconstruction in 1998 to be able to provide a diachronic account of proto tupian Guarani's phonology and morphology to each of the tb Guarani languages. He also used internal reconstruction to explain regular and irregular forms in the system. So what did proto tupian Guarani look like? This is the current segmental phonological inventory that is accepted to be the reconstruction of proto tupian Guarani. There are 17 consonants and 6 vowels reconstructed for proto tupian Guarani. However, these vowels can also be nasalized, resulting in a total number of 12 vowel phonemes. Vowels are quite stable across the different TB Guaranian languages, and thus they don't really contribute to studies of internal classifications in terms of how to group the languages. As you can see, there are two affricates here in the consonants table, the alveolar ts and the palatal ch. There's been some disagreement in the literature concerning these affricates. Beginning with Schleicher in 1998, some linguists began to theorize that proto tupian Guarani may have had only one affricate, due to the belief that the reflexes involved in a two affricate solution were too chaotic, and linguists such as these theorized that correspondence patterns can be explained by later dialectal borrowing rather than two affricates in the proto-language. However, in response to this, Carvalho 
pointed out some issues with Schleicher's claims, such as irrelevant comparisons or incorrect correspondences. He also pointed to existing correspondences for Guarani fricatives that support the reconstruction of two contrasting predity being Guarani consonants. For example, the first set of correspondences here can be accounted for by Proto-Tibian Guarani Tse, where Quetzal changes to Quehe in Avenue E in Old Guarani and Que in, in Baya. And also, Etse changes to Ehe in Tocantins Asarini, Ea in Kayabi, and Essa in Old Tupi. Meanwhile, the next set of correspondences can be accounted for by Proto-Tibian Guarani Tse, where Kiche changes to Kisa in Avenue E in Old Guarani and Kiche in Vaya, and Jachi changes to Sahi in Tocantins Asarini, Jai in Kayabi, and Jassi in Old Tupi. If we were to assume that there was only one affricate, then in these cases it would have had to unconditionally split into H and S in Paraguayan Guarani and Old Guarani, and also split unconditionally into a Null and Ch in Mubaya. It is much simpler to assume that there were two affricates to begin with. Carvalho also describes how the Tse affricate may differ in absolute word initial position, which can be seen in the summary table represented by a third person class 2 prefix, as well as affricates in palatal context where they are marked by preceding E or J. Returning back to the consonants table for prototyping Guarani, there's also been recent speculation around the status of the palatized beater stop Q, which can be seen here. Carvalho published a paper last year claiming that it probably never existed in prototyping Guarani to begin with. He claims that the palatized velar stop was a secondary development of the plain velar stop co consonant that did exist in prototyping Guarani. He also states that by proposing that prototyping Guarani only had the velar stop co, we can get rid of inconsistencies from previous reconstructions that included the palatized velar stop co, as well as removing a proposed unmotivated split in pre prototyping Guarani history. Carvalho states that the contrast between the prototyping Guarani co and co is only found before e, which suggests palatization is just a secondary effect of the front vowel. Carvalho also presents his proposed reconstructive form. This table shows the cognate sets for these reconstructions, and as you can see, the Ika side of the body column has the same reflexes as the care sleep col column. Since these two columns follow the same pattern, uh, there's no reason to assume that care originally had a palatized velar stop uh, rather than a plain velar stop co, which provides support for Carvalho's reconstruction that omits the palatized velar stop co completely. Earlier, I mentioned that nasal harmony in Guarani has no obvious trigger. S.T. Gariba proposes that this could be due to lost earlier phonological rules in pre proto tp Guarani. Firstly, let us look at two examples from the Guarani language, one with nasalization and one without it. The first example has the root guata, containing no nasals and translating to to walk. Here it also has the causative prefix mbo, which contains the nasal oral contour consonant mbo. This nasalizes the per pre person prefix on its left, However, it does not nasalize the root or causative prefix as contour consonants in Guarani do not nasalize anything towards the right. The second example, on the other hand, has the oral root ki, meaning rain. And although this root begins with the voice of stop k, it becomes the nasal oral contour consonant ng, and the causative becomes the nasal allomorph mo. It is unclear how this was triggered according to modern descriptions of Guarani nasal harmony. Uh, furthermore, another intransitive root that begins with an oral voice of stop does not behave in this way, namely the root kapu, which is the third example here. The kappa root behaves the way that oral roots are supposed to act in Guarani, and that does not undergo a nasal harmonic change. Research into this suggests that pre proto in Guarani had a progressive nasalization rule, and that the causative had one fully nasal allomorph that was either ma or more generally just m vowel. There's also a suggestion that a regressive oralization rule emerged later, coupled with an increased popularity of the mbo allomorph, which resulted in the decline of the mo allomorph that now is just a remnant of what was probably the original rule and only exists in a couple of exceptions. To summarize prototypic Guarani phonology, consonant vowel and vowel appear to be the most common types of syllables in prototyping Guarani. However, a word final maximal syllable of consonant vowel consonant can also be found. Codes for this word final consonant vowel consonant syllable are a theorist be p, t, k, m, n, n, j, and possibly w. The presence of medial codes appear to be present depending on interpretations of vowel j sequences, namely word final j is usually treated as a consonant in tb Guarani languages, and thus these sequences could be interpreted as closed syllables instead of diphthongs, leading to consonant vowel consonant clusters being found word immediately. Similarly, glottal stop consonant clusters in some of the daughter languages also lead to suggestions of medial codes in proto tb Guarani. proto tb Guarani is also assumed to have had word final stress due to the large number of daughter languages that have word final stress. Um, there seems to be a lack of glottal fricative h in proto tb and Guarani, despite many daughter languages introducing it into their inventory, often as a reflex of the tse or tse affricates. 
Um, this leads to an isogloss distinction that separates languages that have retained these affricates versus those that have changed it to huh or further to null. For example, old tupi and old granny were separated on this basis. I would just like to finish this video off by mentioning some of the limitations I encountered while researching this topic. Firstly, there were some seminal papers that were repeatedly mentioned in the literature that I could not access, so I'll mention them here. It always 1947 was an early paper on TB and granny languages. Uh, Schleicher 1908 was a paper I did use, but I could only find a preview of the first 24 pages, and thus I lacked most of the discussion on his comparative and internal reconstruction, and had to base most of my discussion off of of his work off of review articles which lacked detail. Jensen 1998 and Mellor 1000 were two other papers that reconstructed Proto TB Granny that I also could not access, and I also could not access the internal reconstruction by Rodriguez and Cabral 2002. Another issue I had was my lack of Spanish and Portuguese proficiency. As Guarani originates from South America, much of the literature is written in these languages and was unable to find translations for many of them. For example, Jensen 1984 is another seminal paper on Proto TB Granny, and although I did translate some short sections of the paper, it is over 150 pages long, so it would have definitely been information I overlooked. Similarly, Rodriguez 2005 is a 253 page long paper, and I cited several times when discussing the internal reconstruction that I included from Rodriguez and Corral 2012, which I'll show here. I believe it may further explain this classification of the TP family, however I could not find a translation for it. Additionally, some other papers in Portuguese and Spanish looked promising, but due to my lacking proficiency in these languages, I was restricted to the English literature. Anyway, that's all I have to say for now, so thank you for watching my video, or as I say in Guarani, Agija. These last few slides are just the reference I use, so thank you again. These are just the image references.